Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. I hope you're enjoying your conference so far. Day two done, uh, and there's a lot more days left. Um, my name's Richard Powell, uh, and this is named Arguments from Scratch. So um, I've been to uh, I've been to a several conferences uh, in the past, and one actually in 2007 is C++ Now. I'm not sure if you all have heard of it or uh, have had a chance to attend. It's a really great conference in Aspen. And one of the things that they've done every year for the last, I think, 11 years, uh, is Jeff Garland organizes what he calls Library in a Week. And Library in a Week is, uh, what you do is you attempt during the conference to, uh, with a group of people, write a library from scratch in a week. And uh, as you can imagine, with all of the activities going on, number of sessions, it's actually really uh, challenging to find the time and sit down. But a group of us uh, uh, in 2007 wanted to sit down and write a library that had to do with parameters and parameter passing. And uh, it was uh, the individuals involved were, uh, oops, other direction. Uh, so Arthur, uh, myself, uh, Gaspar, and Odin, we sat down and we wrote a library we called Argo. Uh, and what it essentially was is a, we were looking at parameters and how to pass them. And this talk is an exploration on one of the uh, parts of the library that we used. And so uh, we started with sort of this question. Given a function with a number of parameters, wouldn't it be cool to be able to write this? And so that's where we started with. And we were like, oh yeah, like, we started thinking about how you could do it and what were some of the techniques. But when we started asking other people, like, hey, you know, wouldn't it be cool if you could do this? The answer we, or the question we didn't get was how, but the question more often was why? Why do you want to do that? And I mean, it goes to the question is why do you want to do anything? Um, no, for us, um, what I found is um, through working on this sort of problem and through actually um, what I hope you get out of this presentation is the reason to do this is for several reasons. First, it's for learning. So through writing this library or through a, a, uh, accepting that challenge and trying to figure out if I could write code that does this thing, I actually learned a lot. And what I'm hoping today is to give you guys a chance to learn about some of these techniques, some of the uh, ways that you can accomplish these sort of tasks that you want to do. Another thing that I got out of doing this uh, library in a week was doing some thinking. Thinking about how you would accomplish this sort of idea. Like, how can I get from one place to another? How do I architect code? What's the battle strategy we want to take to accomplish something? And finally, this gave us an opportunity to do some innovation. We had some chances to explore. And when I think of innovation, to, to stop and say, I think of innovation as where I take uh, different ideas that already exist and combine them together in a new way. So attempting to write this library gave me a chance and gave us a chance to show off some innovations. And I want to share those today. So for today, what we're going to do is we're going to explore several tools to help us accomplish this task. We're going to be looking at C++ 17. We're going to be using Compiler Explorer. Uh, thanks, Matt. I'm not, you know, he's somewhere here. Say thank you to Matt when you see him. Uh, and we are also going to be using Boost HANA. So uh, thank you to Louie for that. Um, and if you're not familiar with Boost HANA, um, I'm this is not going to be a deep exploration on how Boost HANA works, but instead more of an application of Boost HANA. And for those who aren't familiar with Boost HANA, I think of it, or as they say, it's, it's a header-only library uh, for meta template programming, but it's actually, I think of it as almost like the STL for types. And it is very powerful. And when you start using it, I've I've been surprised about how easy it is to use and about what I can get done with it. Oh, so how? So as I said, how do we get from the top to the bottom? And so um, looking around at how arguments get passed, if you look at how arguments are actually passed in a computer uh, in C, plus plus is the arguments are placed on the stack by the call er function, and then the call e will then take them off the stack and use them to accomplish the function it was designed for. 
But at the top, so if we look at other languages such as um, the way the Objective-C runtime works or maybe Python, what they do is they generally use something like message passing where they collect those arguments into some sort of structure, perhaps like a dictionary or a map of some sort, and then they pass it along to the function who then pulls them off in the order it needs. So why don't we accomplish it sort of like that? Let's think about it like what if we, first of all, were to construct some sort of structure that was like a map. And then what we would do is um, why don't we then extract the arguments in the order that we need them, and then why don't we unpack those on the function? Seems pretty straightforward. So this is how we're going to accomplish it. So, and um, we're going to do it live. So this, uh, we will, uh, hopefully this doesn't go horribly wrong. Okay, so, um, and, uh, so I'm using the dark mode here because I think some people say it's better for their eyes. So hopefully it, if, if you can't uh, see the screen, if, if everyone likes this color scheme, we'll go with it. Looks good? Yep, great. Okay, so um, going uh, here and uh, so, First of all, like I said, we want to use uh, C++17. And uh, just a quick little intro for Compile Explorer if you're not totally familiar with it, and uh, shame on you if you aren't. But please start getting familiar with it. It is a very powerful tool. And on the left-hand side here, that's my code where I'm going to be uh, writing all of today's uh, examples. And then uh, what we see is that on the right-hand side, uh, it will compile it into the machine language, and I can see what that is. And over here, I can also choose a number of different compilers that I'd like to explore with, and I can give it some different options. First thing I'm going to do is I said I wanted to use uh, C++17, so I'm going to add that as an option. Great, it compiles. Oh, and I really hope the internet doesn't crap out. Uh, and <laughs> And next, um, you know what we're going to do is let's crank up the optimizations here just a bunch. So um, there we go. Oh, see, that's much better there. So as you can see here uh, in my simple little example, my little toy program, let me increase the sizes here. Um, that looks pretty good. Maybe that's a little, we'll see if that size fits. So what I've done here is I have this little foo function, uh, a meaningless function, which uh, takes the size of a string, adds a factor to it, and then divides by some other factor. And so, and when I calculate the answer, the compiler is very smart and clever, and it figured out the answer is, of course, for 42. Um, and so I said I wanted to also use Boost HANA. So let me include Boost HANA. And um, also, let me make it a little easier for myself. I'm going to say namespace HANA is equal HANA. And there we go. And oh, Right, compiler's not gonna work here because it can't find boost HANA. Well, why don't we just tell Compiler Explorer here that it should use boost? There we go, very nice. Go away and it should compile everything just fine. Awesome, so got my tools already and set up here. Um, let's take a quick exploration here on boost HANA. So, um, as it said, uh, Boost HANA, this is if you go to the documentation, um, I think it's, uh, it's a very big library and there's many parts of it. We're not going to have a chance to explore them all today. Um, but um, this is, uh, you can find it pretty easily with Google or your favorite search engine and um, we're going to probably come back to this several times during today's talk. All right, going back to here. So, um, I'm not going to start at the top and work my way down. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to solve that problem at the top. But why don't we start at the bottom and think about this first stuff. Let's start, let's start with the simple things. Um, so I said that if I was given a, um, some sort of data structure like an array, what I could do is I could take those arguments and up, apply them to the function. Um, well, I said unpack. And um, so it actually, a data structure like that is a non-homogeneous or a heterogeneous uh, structure, which um, all sorts of different types. That sounds actually like um, like a tuple. And uh, let's take a look to see if uh, Hana says uh, they have a tuple. And um, yeah, Hana has a tuple. Now I could use standard tuple, but um, so as Louis says here, uh, conceptually Hana tuple is like a tuple, um, but it has much more bells and whistles. It is uh, has a bunch more stuff that it 
um, I want to use in today's talk. So I'm going to actually use uh, HANA tuple. And so we take a look at how you would use it, and it would look something like this. So you can construct them by using HANA tuple. You give it various types. And um, look, you can trans you can get things out of an index. You can call transform it. Looks like this looks really promising for today. And also, um, I'm going to I'm also going to use a function called uh, unpack. There was a reason I called. Um, I said I would want to have my last step be unpack because that is Hana's way of saying taking a tuple and applying it to a function. Um, why it's called unpack and why it has the order it has um, would probably be a great question to corner Louis with and talk to him. I'm sure he has plenty of opinions. Um, <laughs> what? Monads. Monads, always the answer. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of these ideas together. So first of all, what I want to do is go back to this, and I'm going to say auto, always use auto, almost always use auto, uh, args. And I'm going to make tuple. And then let me just copy in these arguments over here. And then I want to say Hana, almost said unfly unpack the args upon foo. And let's give it a chance, to make it look good and format, and give it a chance to compile. And what do we get? 42. OK, looks like it worked. So what I was able to do here is I constructed a tuple uh, using boost or uh, uh, HANA uh, make tuple. And then I've unpacked it on my function. OK, that seems pretty. Pretty straightforward, good. Um, wonderful. So I already finished my first step. Whew, this is going to be no problem. We're going to be done pretty quick. Ah, uh, yes. So um, now I need to figure out a way to extract it. So I have my data structure that I want to use for applying it to my function. Um, but I said I'm probably going to have some larger data structure where I'm going to extract the values and put them in a, the appropriate order. Um, well. Why don't we, instead of trying to tackle the idea of this, like I don't know exactly what data structure I want to use there yet, why don't we make this a little more simple? What if I was given a tuple, and I want to change the order of the tuple, and apply that to the function? So uh, let's do that. And what I would probably do if I was doing regular code, so let's say instead of args being laid out in that way, my args were actually laid out in some opposite way, the not the correct order that I want for my function. And uh, compilation didn't fail. The types don't match up. It can't unpack that tuple on top of it. And what I would probably do if I was writing some code is I would probably say something like arg pack is going to be um, made from the actual args of, well, I would take in number two, and I would take in number one, and I would take in number zero, and it would probably, let's see, will this work? Uh, no, no, this doesn't work. Hmm. Let's go back to this documentation from Hana over here. Oh, so you'll note he, there's an interesting thing that um, I can't use a subscript bracket, subscript index, index operator um, natively with a value. I need to actually use a type for Hana because it's actually doing this compute, uh, it's, cal uh, it's doing this deduction at compile time. So what I would need to do is if I bring in the use of the literals right here, I'm going to use HANA's literal set. And then I'm going to say underscore C, underscore C, and underscore C. And then um, hopefully, uh, thank you. And I also want to call it pack because I'm pedantic. Thanks. And let's see. Oh, 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 keep going, keep going. Hey, there we go. <laughs> it compiles. So what I've been able to do is I've taken a tuple uh, by using, uh, effectively, it feels like I'm using it as a subscript operator. Um, and I've constructed another tuple, which has the arguments in the correct order. Great. Uh, right, refactor. 
I think it's probably time for us to refactor this code a little bit. So I've got all of this sort of written here. I want to try to make a library. So if you were in the course of making code, I strongly encourage you at certain points in your code, like, hey, let me refactor this. This all looks like one big function. Maybe these could be some subroutines. So what I want to do is I would want to write something that sort of looks like, uh, instead of archive, I want to say extract. I want to extract my args from my args. And so what I would want to do is I want to write something probably that looks like um, const expert. Well, you got to use const expert. Uh, auto. Um, extract um, uh, args and uh, probably just stick in this whole thing like this. Will that work? Um, oh, I need to give a type to this. Okay, really, I'd love to be able to write this. So extract auto, because I like auto, and I love using it sort of everywhere, and I don't really want to have to. Uh, so <laughs> this doesn't compile. Don't give away the secrets. It all builds to the end in the conclusion. Um, so what I would do normally if I was writing some code, I would write something like template type name, and I would probably put T here. And if I do that, um, then what happens is uh, it should compile. Yes, there we go. Perfect. My extract function is a generic uh, const expert uh, template function that uh, it's able to deduce what the type of T is. But I would really like to use auto in this case. And so, as uh, Gaspar was alluding to, you actually, you can. So if I didn't make it a template function, but instead a const expr lambda, then what happens is I'm able, oh, please compile. So we will see if I've let it, yes, good. So what happens is this compiles. So what this is is I am not having I don't have a function template. Instead, I have a const x for lambda. And in a lambda argument setting, you're able to deduce you're able to use auto as an input parameter. And so in fact, why is this lambda context? Because you have to const x for everything. No, like why is variables the expression is actually const x And so the, the comment from the front row is uh, lam uh, functions aren't implicitly const expert, but a lambda function is implicitly const expert from 17, from 17 onwards. So, um, okay, I learned no, something. That's an accidentally const expert lambda. That's an accidentally const expert lambda. We're gonna, like we're gonna keep going with it because all my slides use it. <laughs> um, no, it's correct. It's correct. <laughs> So um, what I've seen more in modern code and what you'll probably end up seeing more is this sort of paradigm idiom that starts, uh, or people are adopting, which instead of writing a const x for function, people are instead writing a const x for lambda like this. And I actually think I like this. I'm, I've started like thinking this is really, it makes you feel really modern. Um, it's like you start feeling like, hey, isn't that cool? I, it's just one line as opposed to two. Um, it feels a lot more compact. Uh, the things that usually get me is, um, because uh, foo is now actually, I think, technically an object, you have to have the semicolon at the end as opposed to it being a function where it didn't need the semicolon. So I often kind of try to figure out, why aren't things building? Oh, right, I forgot to put the semicolon at the end. So join the club of the cool kids and start never have to write template again. All right, um, so let's continue our refactoring here. Uh, one thing I don't like currently is these numbers. So that doesn't feel like it should be in a subroutine. I really want to split those numbers out from the function. So I'd love to be able to say something like having a, a specification of the order of the arguments. So what I really want is to say that I'm going to have some sort of arg spec, I guess. Um, and that's going to be a tuple of the arguments in their order. Um, so I'm going to say 2, 1, and 0. Um, and then what I want to be able to do is I would want to be able to pass that into my extract function. And then I think I'm going to, I would say, auto argspec. And now I have to figure out how can I um, 
Now what, now what do I want to do? What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to, uh, for each of the arguments in my arg spec, walk through them and get the answer from that arg. So I, I want to be able to um, go from one container type, apply a function to it, and end up with a different container type. Um, or, huh? A cursive variant. Maybe, uh, wouldn't it? Very bad. No, um, there's actually a, an algorithm that you do this um, pretty commonly in uh, STL right now, um, this sort of operation. Transform. 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 Well, let, let's see. Does, uh, does uh, boost, does HANA have a transform? Hey, what do you know? Transform right here. So maps a function over uh, a functor. Um, not sure exactly what that means. Here's an interesting example uh, on a transform. Um, so, given all these different things, you know what? I'm going to just, you know what? I'm just going to try to see what happens if I use it in my code. What's the worst that could happen? So, let me go ahead and say, I want to say something like uh, transform HANA of the, for every item in the arg spec, and it says it takes a lambda. Um, I think it said something like auto key. So for every item that it's going to go through the arc spec, I'm going to supply it a lambda, and it's going to pass that to uh, my uh, or my lambda, and it's going to pass things as an argument or pass the argument as a key. And I'm just going to say return um, args of key. And let's see if that works. Oh, that's probably not going to work. What was that? Oh, I haven't captured the args. Okay, let me uh, capture args. Um, let's do that and uh, thank you. It's, it's great having a group brain help you program. And there we go, a program. Oh, yeah, it compiles. Awesome. So uh, what I've been able to do is I have my arg spec right here and I have my args and when I go through and extract it, I'm supplying the order I want and the uh, tuple of the items uh, in the, the wrong order when now it will construct them in the correct order. Hurrah. Perfect. So, awesome. Let's go back to the slides. So, um, essentially we did that step we wanted to do. We had given a tuple in a different order, we extracted it in the correct order. Um, now, uh, what we said before is we want to have some sort of data structure that actually maps something like a, a key to a value. And a, um, a mapping a key to a value certainly sounds like a data structure we all know and love. It sounds like a map. Um, and so uh, why don't we create a map that has these, uh, I'm going to repurpose the uh, integer constants from Boos HANA, and I'm going to create a map. And I'm, you know, I'm betting that HANA has a map in it because it sort of had just about everything else. Um, and so, sequence structure, let me take a look for map uh, to see, boost map, great, boost map. Uh, order of the blah, 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 how do you use it? Oh, make map, make pair. Well, let me give it a shot. So, uh, instead of making a tuple, let me instead make a map. And it said that what you do is you make a map of make pairs, so, on a make pair of, uh, let me say, I was going to say, this is the second argument. This is supposed to be the first argument. That's supposed to be the zeroth argument. So let me just index them appropriately. And um, so now um, I've got my mapping of uh, the second argument's number is hello world. The first argument is 0.5. And the zeroth argument is supposed to be 10. Um, and that means now my arc spec is actually uh, in the wrong order. It actually should be pulling them out in the correct order. So let me reorder this to be the first argument, the second argument, and the, or the zeroth argument, the first argument, and the second argument. And let's see what will happen. Hey, it worked. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, actually, that is really uh, cool when you think about it because I only changed, I only changed the arg spec and the map. I only made something a tuple and a map. I didn't actually change my extract function. I kept that the same. I didn't have to actually change it. And actually, I think that speaks to um, 
how the extract function is written to be extremely generic. It's not actually coded against types. Uh, it re it's Return type is auto, it's automatically deduced. Its input types are auto and they're automatically deduced. This actually goes to uh, a big, um, what Bjarne was talking about is like, or, and other people have alluded to in the past is, don't code against a type. Write algorithms, write generic code. And if you can write generic code, you can have code that is clear and is able to be used in many different contexts and behaves in the way you would want it to. Great. So. We go, and uh, ooh, I pushed a button, I'm not sure what it did. Map, okay, so, um, and so here we are. Uh, we've accomplished what we wanted to do. We have some sort of map structure. Uh, it's a key value pair from integer types to our values. Um, I would like to do this. I mean, why is it that Boost HANA can have the, the cool things? I want the cool thing too. I wanna have the underscore arg. I want my own user-defined literals, despite what other people have said in previous sessions. Um, no, I think uh, user-defined literals are actually quite cool. Um, so, and I'd like to try out and learn how they work. Okay, let's give it a shot. So um, this is from a CPP reference on how you would use it. So let me go ahead and go and copy and paste this. And I'm just gonna stick it, I don't know, I'll have it right here. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be arg. And what, what is R going to return? Well, um, I want it to return um, not an integer. It's given an array of chars. It feels like it should return something like a string. Um, and let me get us, uh, let me guess, Hana probably has a string, um, right? And you probably need to supply the types of the strings like that. Um, and then what should it return? Well, just return the type that you said was the return type. Cool, so uh, that compiles. So what I've said here is I have my own uh, user-defined literal that will return a HANA string of chars, and you specify the type of the HANA string by the, um, the template on chars there. Uh, this is a variadic uh, template. It's what it is, is it's all the chars of what uh, the string has been, uh, you, I'll show you in a second. And, um, there is one thing that bothers me a little bit here, though, is make just, no, I don't want to make it a lambda. No. Uh, ah, it's, it's, I'm getting some warnings here. Well, uh, I'm just gonna switch over to GCC, so. <laughs> there, I think, uh, yeah, the thing about it is, uh, t uh, this is a, currently a GCC extension. I'm not sure if it's actually uh, destined to be, a, it's never gonna be in the standard. It was rejected firmly and early. There's something better coming. Okay, well. In this case, more ugly. Okay. Um, well, here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over and start using my, uh, my custom user defined literal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my original function had uh, its original arguments were A. Um, and I'm just gonna say, and it was B, and it was C. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the values in my map so they're tagged in the same way. Hello world should be the C argument, this should be the B argument, and this would be the A argument. And you would imagine that in a larger function I would actually give more meaningful names, but because I need to type this live, they are short. And hopefully um, I have not crashed Compiler Explorer or this is gonna be a really short talk. Oh, oh, oh. Is everyone else using Compiler Explorer in their talks at the same time? I sure hope not. Or else this is gonna be a really slow talk. Yes, good. Oh, this could be really bad. Um, do I just push refresh? Are we gonna fix this in post? <laughs> oh, am I not able to reach the server? Uh, okay, um, am I gonna to have to jump over to my own phone? Is that going, this is gonna end in tears, I think. Hopefully. And 
Well, I'm connected to my phone. Uh, let me go over here and uh, uh, you don't, I don't really want to save. How do you kick Compiler Explorer in the butt? Hey, <laughs> I can breathe again. Okay, so we're back to working. All right, awesome. So I can't recall where we were. Um, we were, we had just added our own uh, user-defined literal called arg, and that's pretty cool. I, I think it's pretty cool. So we have our own user-defined literals. Great, user-defined literals. All right, time for a little more refactoring. So, um, yeah, I think what we could do here is, it looks like all of this um, seems to be doing uh, a little bit of the same thing. What it's doing is um, it's, it's been given a function, it's been given an arg spec, and it makes an arg pack and it extracts it. So why don't we uh, instead refactor this into something like called like, um, I don't know, compose. So given a function and given an arg spec uh, and given a bunch of arguments, do the right thing. So let's see over here. Uh, we would say uh, const expert uh, auto compose equal to uh, our fun little trick. And let's stick all that code in there. And we said we wanted to say take an auto f, auto arg spec, and um, any number of input arguments. So I specify a variadic input argument by saying dot, dot, dot. Uh, input arg spec. And um, one uh, little handy mnemonic is every time you want to use a variadic uh, dot, 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 uh, when you're declaring it, you put it before the variable name. And when you're using it, you put it after the variable name. So I'm going to do. It's east dot, dot, dot. It's east dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would do that. So I would say my args. So I've unpacked them onto my map. Um, and then what I'm going to do is. I created my args, I extract them with my, to make my arg pack, and then I unpack that onto my function. Oh, right, and I need to close off my declaration of the compose const expert lambda, and it compiles, I hope. There we go. Oh, what happened? Oh, what did I, why? Well, here's what I, here's, here's the answer over here. But why is this in here? Uh, I think the uh, dirty little secret I've been doing throughout the talk is finally catching up to me. Um, I've been using auto, uh, and I've been passing around my arguments by value. And um, I've been writing this really quick, and this is a great way for prototyping. But what I'm showing you here is not really what you would write in any sort of uh, production level code. Um, because I'm taking everything by value, um, and my arguments are so small, the compiler can really see what I'm doing. But when I take the function f uh, foo by auto without uh, by value, um, the compiler actually, I haven't taken it by the function, so I've taken it by a function pointer. And because I took it by a function pointer, the compiler is like, oh, you know what? I need to make sure that that pointer can refer to something. So it keeps it in the code. And um, I can fix it with one character. And there we go. And so, Really, when you're writing code like this and you're using auto a lot, you should probably be taking it by either auto ref or auto uh, ref ref and make it a forwarding ref and use the appropriate forwarding uh, uh, declarations throughout. Um, but for the purpose of this talk, I wanted to go quickly and I wanted to show how you can play around with code and maybe not make it production ready, but learn a lot through the actions. So, um, so yeah, that, that auto, um, I'm going to use a reference in this case. And um, forgive me for not using it in all of the cases and using the appropriate forwarding, but I hope you uh, get the essence of this talk and not using this for any sort of production level stuff. Okay, let's see here. All right. I think we're about ready to start getting up to the top of the mountain. All right, so now we have to figure out some way to construct this map given that sort of syntax up there. OK, well, this is where I'm going to maybe cheat a little bit and use a level of indirection. 
Instead of um, using the actual function, I'm going to put a helper function in place. I'm going to make some sort of helper function that, when given this map, uh, will do the right thing. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some sort of adapter function. Um, so what I mean by that is what I want to be able to do is I want to write something that, say, I would say auto um, my foo is equal to if I wrote an adapter that said took in foo and an arg spec would then allow me later on to say my foo on the arguments. That's what I want to be able to write. So why don't I try writing const expert auto. We could now I'll say it together. Const expert auto um, adapt. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a function and an input arg spec. And what it's going to do is a return. Uh, well, I'm going to have it make an arg spec off of the input arg spec. And return code. You know what? I'm just going to put this whole thing in there. So why don't I just stick this inside of there and have it return? Oh, have it return the lambda. So now I don't need to pass in those as parameters. I can stick them into the capture list. What do you guys call it? I call it the capture list like that. And then we go and we've got that. And I th there we go. So yeah, that'll work. So what I've done here is I've made a uh, const x for lambda that when given a function and given an array of arg spec, uh, arguments that would, you know, I basically have to tell, hey, the compiler, these are the arguments of that function. It'll now return for me a lambda whose purpose is given an array of this sort of dictionary of, or sorry, a map, a HANA map of all of the arguments will extract the correct values and apply them onto the function. All right. So, so, so I'm here. I've, I've, I, we're, we're pretty much to the top of the mountain where uh, I have my uh, foo function. I've, I've sort of had to create a little adapter function that took in uh, the actual, it uh, took in a, this uh, map of uh, arguments. It then uh, extracts them into the appropriate order and it applies them on the function. But I would really like to write this. I, mean, I think it would be really, it'd be really nifty to be able to have this syntax. I think it's, uh, uh, it feels more natural. Um, and, um, but how could I write something like this? So um, is there a way, so I really want to use that equal sign. Operator overload. All right. So um, in our sort of pseudo syntax that we were using, I was writing this thing sound saying I had this sort of pair. And what I was doing was it was representing the code as a pair of HANA strings to T's. And um, I had my user defined literal arg, which was returning HANA strings. Well, what if my user defined literal um, returned for me a type that overloaded operator equal, and when you used operator equal, return for me a pair of HANA strings to the value type. Like, what if I returned name param, and then what happened was uh, the return type of name param was actually not a reference to the type itself, but instead something uh, else, the pair that I want to get. So if I did that, then I could write arg is equal to hello world. And what that would do effectively would return me a pair of HANA strings to T's. All right, well, why don't we try this out? Let's see if this works. Um, and because of all of the typing involved here, I have, I'm going to pull a little Martha Stewart. And I have one pre-baked over here. Because I'm not, I mean, as fun as it is to watch 
have you guys watch me type. It's, I don't think it's fun for all of us. All right, so. <laughs> so over here, I have my struct uh, named param. And uh, this should compile, because I haven't actually done anything to the code. All I've introduced is an instruct. So, um, and what happens is uh, it has a, um, I'm using a, a name. And the name is actually the HANA string. And I've written a helper function get name, which returns uh, an instance of that HANA uh, string. And what I've done is my <coughs> operator equal, or operator assign, assignment operator? Ooh. Assignment operator actually takes in any value. Um, here I actually am using the, uh, it is a forwarding reference. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to return um, the pair, the HANA pair of the HANA string and that type. So that means, in theory, I just need to be able to write this as named param. And I think that should probably just work. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Now I have to actually use it. Right, right, yo. So now I have to actually say, um, instead of name param, uh, make pair, I should be, I should have to say equals, equals, and equals, and get rid of all the extra parentheses, and then give it a second. Let's see what happens. Failed. Ah, oh, so close. All right, what happened here? What happened? Ooh, trans. For, oh, 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 but hash table, mm, 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 I know what's going on here, oh, so, so before, so while I had changed my parameter list in that function, my, in the my foo function, um, my arg spec, the specification of my arguments, still was a tuple of HANA strings. Well, it was when the underscore args was returning HANA strings. But now, when I changed it to be taking name parameters, it became a tuple of name parameters. And name parameters, um, HANA doesn't know how to do the lookup on the hash table of name parameters. Now, I could teach it how to do it, or what I could do is in some way, I could pro can I get back to having it be a tuple of HANA strings? All right, let's try that, let's try that. So uh, I think what I need to do here is given um, this arg spec is I really want to say, um, let me get the arg names. So I'm going to uh, say something, get names. So the get names is going to just get the names from that arg spec. And now instead of passing in the arg spec to ex the extract function, I'm going to pass in the get name, uh, arg names. And the arg names is going to be the tuple of uh, HANA strings. So that should work. So now I just have to write this get names function. And what is that get names function going to do? Well, that get names function has to walk over the array of name parameters and get the names from it. And that sounds a lot like what we did for this extract function. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to call this get names. And instead of uh, ha it doesn't have any args, what it has is the arg spec. So for each of the arg specs, given the keys, um, what I need to do is I need it to return. And I got this here. It already has a function here called get names. Well, I'm just going to call get name. And let's see. And it compiles. And so, yes, there you have name parameters from scratch. So let's take a look at what we did. So what I have here is I have an adapt function. And what the adapt function does is it's given a function. It's given an, any number of arguments that specify its argument specification. And what we do from that is we're going to construct a tuple of the arg specs. Well, so the underscore args was a name parameter, which I can't use as a uh, lookup onto the extract function. So what I did was I extracted the names from it. These two get passed, uh, get captured in this new lambda that I create. And this lambda that I create is actually the myfu lambda in this case. And when my, it is given an input spec, uh, args spec, huh, why do I call it the same thing twice? Oops. Uh, well, that, isn't that interesting? Um, just for the 
Okay, because I'm just going to go like that. There we go. Better. Uh, so it's given its input args. Uh, it goes ahead and constructs a tuple from those. Uh, it actually constructs a map from it. We then extract the args we want in the appropriate order based on our argument spec, and we unpack them on the function, and it executes. And to show that it really works, if I just go ahead and reorder things into a different order, uh, it'll recompile, and it computes the same answer. There we go. So, and uh, if we had changed what it is, instead of hello world, uh, we change the answer. All it's doing is it's forwarding those along. Boom, wonderful. So, as I said before, we started at the top, we figured out all these different steps, and we made it to the bottom. And so, really, the why on this, I think, can be illustrated at the end here. We, we wanted to do this so we could learn something. We wanted to take a look at you know, how uh, do different things in C++17 work and learn a little bit about uh, HANA along the way. Uh, this is a little taste onto it. There's, it's a very powerful library, and there's a whole lot more I'm sure we could do with it. And we wanted to work on some thinking. This is actually um, illustrates maybe the way you can approach your problems at work, which is, how am I going to do this? Well, let me think about, like, well, how does the compiler do this? Like, if the compiler were to do this, how would it do it? It would probably do something similar to this. Let's think about a way we can accomplish this. And then finally, it's like, let's take a look at some different techniques, maybe something that you would have never really done. I don't think I would have ever overloaded operator equals in any other context. I don't know if I would recommend you overload operator equals on a regular basis, but in this case, it, maybe it works. It feels like it's a natural syntax. And uh, also, uh, that const expert trick, and it's like, ooh, that's really kind of neat. I like that. I you know, maybe will not use it all the time, but I'll probably go ahead and stick it in my code. So um, some helpful links here if you want to take a look. We've got uh, I, uh, for uh, people, the slides will be posted, and you can take a look at those. And I want to do a special call out to, well, we have Odin in the front row here, and we have Gaspar, and uh, Arthur is somewhere at the conference. If you see him, stop him and say hi. And a real big special thanks to uh, Louis uh, for HANA. It's a powerful library. And Matt Godbolt for uh, Compiler Explorer. And with that, uh, thank you. And we have 12 minutes for questions. Uh, front row people, uh, you guys have been talking the whole time. Is there anybody in the other rows? Uh, like, if you don't mind, just to give other people a chance. Was there a question over here? I guess there is. So first off, if you have a question, come to the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so my question would be, uh, how well does it work with uh, a function that has default arguments? Oh, so um, I have practice. I, there's a whole set of bonus slides about uh, default arguments that won't fit into the time. Uh, so you can, um, you can add in default arguments. So the actual library on GitHub has default arguments, the way of uh, changing arguments in a particular order, saying some arguments are required. Um, and there is a lot of future ideas we want to add, but we um, haven't quite had the chance to work on them. So yeah, this technique can work with default arguments. You just have to sort of like, um, create a map that actually has defaults supplied so that if you didn't find them in there, you can at least extract something. So yeah. Nice, thanks. Yeah. So we all just saw this took an hour. What do you do with the rest of the week? <laughs> <laughs> How long yeah. did it actually take? Oh, I, mean, I, what? I, I think it actually, we didn't finish it till like weeks afterwards. Uh, well, no, there was actually, it was like little bits and pieces that uh, came in bursts and stuff like that. Um, a couple hours. Yeah, it's um, like the the main issue was that code generation was absolutely atrocious until we spoke to Louis and then he <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, so so as Gaspar was saying, it took about four or five hours on the time, but we actually yeah, we were we had Louis right there, we could corner and ask him questions. So that certainly put things along quickly. So uh, Odin. What if you have a function that takes an in out parameter by oh. reference? I have. Look at the library. Oh. Uh, it, it does perfect forwarding on like this. Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. You can have perfect forwarding um, in a real library. I'm not doing perfect forwarding here, but I do believe, yeah, actually, Argo does do perfect forwarding. I think we have. Right. You have to capture the type specifically so that you, like, you, you have to actually capture the R values in it and everything uh, the way you get it in the parameter path, and you 
put that into a byte, and you store a pointer to that, so that you can quickly manipulate and squiggle those tuples, so that you're not actually copying the entire value, because you won't be able to do that with this non-copyable. Right, so like there, there's a whole lot of tricks you actually have to do if you want to do it right. Uh, but if you want to make a really great educational talk about how to use deep Kana, you don't do that. Yeah, so, uh, I think the answer was, it's complicated. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Sir? Can you avoid writing that call to adapt in any way? Can you avoid writing that call to adapt in any way? So I was, I, I think I tried um, doing things like um, writing a macro or something that would say, um, I have a, so if you have your regular function foo, I would say, well, I'd introduce a new foo that takes in anything. So it takes in all the other types of things and then you could do that. Um, but I ran into some name collisions where uh, when you call that, it was, I think it was trying to end up, it ended up trying to uh, it get confused about which one to call the new function or the old function. And um, I'm pretty sure there's a way to solve it, but in the week of code, we didn't solve it. And so. If, can you avoid underscore args? And uh, well, the reason I was uh, doing that was because I really wanted we, I really wanted to have the um, uh, key equals syntax. I wanted to have like the argument equals something, and and to make that work, you really need a type on that one side, um, and so it needed to be something. And uh, the user defined literal felt like a good way to go. Um, could you avoid the underscore args or, or the underscore? I don't think you can't avoid the underscore, but um, can you use some other way of doing it? Probably. Um, there might be some. C plus plus 20, hopefully, it would be uh, arg open angle bracket quote. Oh, quote. right. Yeah, you could do something like declare something. Yeah, so there, there would be ways of, uh, you could put the arg in front and still quote and capture and have that declare a new type that would uh, be there, yeah. So in theory, there are ways to get around it, but um, I think actually it's still, it's pretty neat to see how user-defined literals work. Um, so. Yes, if you define a global object gate, but then like the thing is then, I guess that means that for every function that exists, you could define every argument as a special type and that would be fun. <laughs> From the type that's in the library. Yeah. So that's all you need to do. And hope, you just have a bunch of tags across. You have a bunch of tags and hopefully you don't collide with anything and other namespaces and yeah, I probably wouldn't go that approach. Yeah, so and I'll even say that like, uh, one of the things about this um, actually I thought was a, a pretty useful part of this library in a week was maybe this, I don't know if this really needs to be part of your code or part of the library. I mean, I, I, there's, there are many reasons not to use name parameters and there's like, you can, you can read the Stack Overflow rants about them or reasons to do it. Um, but I actually thought the bigger thing about this was seeing how the compiler works and experimenting with a language feature to find out if this really makes sense. And like, what are the things in the language that are preventing us from just doing this? And so that I think is actually, it's, um, it, that's maybe one of the things I wanna leave you all with is, is don't think about this as, as uh, the destination. It's not, a, this, this talk really isn't about name parameters. And this library, I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend anyone use it. I mean, it's not bad, but like it's, it's a, uh, <laughs> but I think the journey is the important thing about learning how we got here. I think that's actually the thing I take away and that's actually what I would encourage you all is to find some sort of question that like you're like, I, can I do this with C++? And it's probably, you know, maybe you can't, but I don't know, maybe it's worth trying because you'll learn a lot through this process. And, and it, you know, not everything we do is gonna be production worthy and it's really important to exercise your brain, learn about different things and try to expand your knowledge. And so um, I'm gonna leave you with that today. So thank you very much.